Um, so before we go, we'll just review some top stories now. Samson, the last story yeah. I read, over 100 million Nigerians living in poverty. That's coming from um, the presidential the, candidate of the Labour Party. And we also saw the first story I, I, I took on this day paper about Nigerians oil. It's going, it's, it has really, really dropped through so all of mm -hmm. those things from the state of the economy to insecurity. I know we've mentioned this the last time I was on the show. That was, yep. was on Friday or on Thursday. Friday. On Friday, about how insec insecurity has affected every facet of, of the, the policy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're still looking at it. 100 million Nigerians in poverty. How many Nigerians do we have? How many people do we have in Nigeria that we have? That means just 1% of Nigerians that are, would like say, relatively comfortable in that sense. Well, the 1% will be, you know, the top. That would be the top 1% really. But when you look at it, that, that figure is probably even modest really mm. because um, we know we're over 200 million. We've of not course. had a population census since 2006. Yeah. You know, so we really can't place an accurate figure that some quarters that will tell you are about 240 million. But what's guaranteed is we're over 200 million Nigerians. Now, you look at the you know um, staggering number. 100 million is half of that, right? Mm. And if you really put into consideration, you know, the various parameters um, upon which, you know, the United Nations draws the line on poverty, poverty yeah. you realize that we're probably even over more, um, over, over 100, 100 million, million yeah. up, you know, within that sphere. Again, I say it all the time. Sometimes the middle class seems like, you know, um, oh, you're comfortable, you know, you're in between the top 1% and the, mm. you know, um, lower class or, the, you know, the poverty line. But in the real sense, the middle class too can be a facade because um, th th those members there, if they're not careful, they just probably want health crisis mm. away from, you know, the poverty line. Um, a health crisis that will qu probably require surgery of 15, 20 million, probably a heart surgery or kidney or what have you. And you just realize that those who even think they're stable within that so-called middle class bracket find themselves, you know, um, among the, those within the poverty line. Again, as a nation, we need to do better. We know quite well we have issues with our economy. We have issues with Nigerians not being able to afford basic, mm. you know, I things. Mean, the yeah. standard of living is extremely low. The cost of living is ridiculously high. You have to balance it. It's, it can't work. And you look at the minimum wage. We do not even have a living wage. The minimum wage is 30,000. Yeah. And when, you, yeah, 30,000 there, that's an average of 1,000 there per day for the average worker, you know, government worker. When you put into consideration the cost of goods and what have you, you realize that it is not even, you know, a living wage. You can't live yeah. on that oh, because you pay utility bills, you have to save up for probably rent and all. and all of that. There's transportation, there's feeding. It is ridiculous. So, um, yes, um, the, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party is, you know, right when it says over um, 100 million but i think um, the number is actually more well you know another interesting thing is that in i've seen a video of the late Elijah could mm -hmm. just before, while we're remembering her death yeah. and then that was in 1993 after the announcement of her husband's election she has a speech and she mentioned still the one percent of nigerians living in poverty so from 1993 up to 2022, mm -hmm. we still have one percent of Nigerians living in poverty, and then there have been talks of the economy is rising. We're trying to build this and build that to make sure that we have stable economy. But how how come someone who was one of the frontiers fighting for democracy mm -hmm. talk about one percent then, and we still have this conversation now? That's that, that brings that. May, may that well, now say, we don't even have one percent. Well, that is let's just assume it's one percent <laughs> assumptions, of okay. course, not based on fact now. That is to say that even the progress we think we are recording is on a snail speed. Now, other climbs, of course, other countries have recorded progress from 1993 mm -hmm. up to date. And you could see the transformation. It's, it's very, very evident. Well, Nigeria from 1993 up to date, we're having... So we're still recording the one percent of poverty of the the average, of course, comfortable Nigerian. What's happening? Why all of these talks of economy rejigging the economy? Is it that it's not working, or there's something we're not doing rightly? Well, so many things. You can't take out the place of corruption, you know, in in, in the mix. Um, we've had several um governors being um you know um not just governors, you know, even political leaders being accused of embezzling mm -hmm. funds or misappropriating to tunes of billions of naira. And um, yes, few of them have been prosecuted. I mean, you had um, the former Delta State Governor yeah. Ibori. Mm -hmm. You had um, the two governors that um, the president just yes. gave presidential pardon, pardon and all of yeah. that. So there's the place of corruption. Which is being, still a topic up to now. Definitely. There's the place of corruption being probably playing a huge role in how um, the progress of this nation has been stalled. But beyond that, we've also not moved away from 
other aspects of things in terms of moving with the trend of you know um, the, the world, the global world in terms of technology and what have you. Our dependency on oil was just too much mm. and we, for all of the talks of oh we'll diversify and we forgot but, you know, every other including we forgot other sectors of of the policy so uh, we've suffered from that and you know when you now have issues with oil prices tumbling and all it affects us again that's not to also you know um roll out the place of um oil theft that we've seen mm. as well as um vandalism. you know vandalism of um you know, all, if, um, um, all facilities, yeah. all of these things have definitely taken a toll on our economy. Now, um, the NNPC um, released a statement, a report, not just a statement, a report, um, you know, early this year. And they said from January last year to November 2021, we lost over 7 trillion there due to oil theft and, you know, um, destruction of oil facilities. Again, as a nation. Seven trillion naira will go a long way in addressing some of our basic needs. In terms, how much is our budget? Let's start from <laughs> I was there. Going to come to you that, know, yes. so if we, we are losing seven trillion naira within eleven months, let's even peg it at twelve months. If we are losing it's twelve, too much. you know, it's too much. Because you look at the budget, that's, you know, roughly like half of the budget already. That $7 trillion could have gone into, you know, um, making good use of it in terms of developing the nation, be it infrastructure or what have you. Again, all of these things have to be put into perspectives. There's a place of corruption, as I've said earlier. There's the place of, you know, um, oil theft and vandalism to oil facilities. There's also the place of we not diversifying our economy in the real sense of diversification, not just by mere words mm -hmm. or rhetorics, then we've not also moved with the trend of, you know, other, um, you know, advanced countries in terms of keen into technology and what have you to progress. Well, quickly before we go, Samson, you're doing amazing, by the way. Now, let's Thank look you. at the, the start for the vice president, you know, mm -hmm. that's a deadline. <laughs> and um, Ashwaju Bola to the way he's saying he needs more time. Well, mm -hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's on our side. But since this relates... I hope our neck doesn't change. That's the thing. I, the well, goalposts. We hope so, because the elections are coming up. That, you know, we think that the elections are next year. It's, mm -hmm. it's only less than a year. So we think we have a lot of time. But for an election, a general election, we cannot, we cannot even afford to sleep on it's horses. It's uh, No, because this related to the story on um, the business day paper, mm -hmm. it said factors driving up surge in youth for the registration. And also another one says, so soccer generation's interest in voting swells. Yep. The search for the vice president and also this goes hand in hand somehow because it involves politics. Of course, the INEC that closed their portal mm -hmm. before they already said that the, the, the deadline is still yes, June, Friday. June 30. Yeah. I'm, I'm no. talking about some um, submission of no, names. Yeah, for the vice president. Oh. I'm talking about the INEC registration. INEC registration. Yeah, okay, June okay. 30. So all of these things, talking about the INEC, let's start from the INEC submission of names for I the hope vice they don't president. shift the goalposts. Yeah. That, that's my hope. Again, it's all about politics. It's all about the strategies, you know, calculations here and there. You're trying to, you know, get someone who has the popularity. Elections are about numbers. Mm. So you need someone who has the traction, who has the followers, who can command the numbers mm. at the polls. And for both parties, the prominent parties now, your PDP, your APC, that's where, you know, they would have to strategize who can they get to you know, um, complement their flag bearer in terms of getting more people um, to vote for the party. That's one. Two, because we are a nation that has certain, you know, um, you know, backholds in terms of what restricts us, we still have to, you know, move along ethnic and religious lines, which is quite yeah. ridiculous. So there's also a place of, within this that strategy, you're thinking of the religious implication. Muslim, Muslim, is he a Christian, Muslim, Muslim, yeah. Christian, Christian? You're trying to balance it mm. in, you know, for in the sake of a fair play or fair representation, as it were. Although that those who definitely question if that's indeed a fair representation. But, but for peace to reign. For peace, is, that's, that's important. Yeah, exactly, for fair representation, you have to think about that. So, for all of those permutations, it's it you know the the window or the um, blankets um, of representatives who you can pick from is definitely limited. So let's see how it pans out. I know um, you have um, two governors mm -hmm. from the south. I'm um, talking about um, the River State Governor Pretty. as well as Delta State uh, Governor yeah. um, being the prominent oh, wow. ones that will most likely be the VP to um, Atiku Abubakar for PDP for um, you know the APC. There are still various names coming up in the air, and there are still, you know, suggestions or rumors that it could be a Muslim-Muslim ticket. But we'll see how all of that mm. pans out by Friday when, you know, names have to be submitted. Uh, okay. Again, for, you know, the um, voters, Utf. it's good that, you know, the, the youths of this generation are re rejecting the notion of um, apathy within them when it comes to our politics. As I've said several times, we all need to get involved. That perfect state of union that we seemingly mm. are chasing, 
it's not going to come by itself. We have to put in the work. It requires everyone, you know, chipping in, diving in, staying at it. And that requires some people contesting and being involved in the process, mm. the political process, that those who won't get involved yeah. in the process, but probably join pressure groups, you know, mm. to influence political but decisions. But it starts from the grassroots. I've said several times, it's not some, you know, um, trickle-down economics like the far right will tell you. The change we seek starts from the bottom up to the top, and that's how mm. we can change this nation for the well, uh, well, thank you so much, Samson. We have, we still have yep. lots, uh, lots, 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 lots mm -hmm. of papers, of topics to be viewed. Do you have something you want the, to the, pick The up? good one has to be on The Guardian, talking about health issues, the mm. bottom strip. Um, WHO, the, you know, oh, the yeah. crying um, acute shortage of blood. And um, w we saw that when the Owa massacre happened, you mm. know, there were several calls for people to donate. donate blood, yes. Again, we do not have to wait, you know, for incidents like this to happen before people donate. Mm. This is a rallying call to fellow Nigerians. It's part of our duty mm. to one another you know, as humans, really that know. once in a while just, you know, go there on a regular basis, they take your blood, they test it, once it's certified good, you know, you can always donate a pint to whatever it is, you know, to the blood bank, just to help one another when cases of emergency arises. I think the best one is that of scientists having a breakthrough mm. cure for cancer yeah. i think that that's is yeah. you know that is the best oftentimes we know cancer is, a t um, cancer is terminal mm. and you know people it's basically like a death warrant signed once you know you are diagnosed with that it's all over people spend thousands of millions of now you know on that so it's good to see that scientists are coming through in terms of um, cure to this again it will be expensive when the cure comes out but at least it's a step in the right direction for us well um that's important too. Mm. But then uh, there's not there's a story that's not so pleasing also. As much as it's good to have good news, but then we yeah. have to be realistic. The story on page six of the business paper that says pilots, engineers flew Nigeria for jobs in Canada Middle mm. East. We now the, the brain drain is started with the medical sector to the yep. educational sector to uh, every, every sector. sector. And now you're having pilots and engineers mm -hmm. fleeing. The world is going what well, the world is already full of tech. Yep. If everyone is doing tech and mm. practicing tech in Nigeria would help the economy. Now we have people who would be important to the economy we still talk about yes. to helping us boost it, fleeing to have jobs in crimes they see as better and they would have better opportunities, better working environment, but probably better um Better space to do, of, living, uh, of course, to atmosphere. be better yeah. in their field. We, we've seen this you can't over blame time. Them. You can't blame them. But what's them. happening? We can't afford to, of course, I know we can mm -hmm. blame them, but then what's happening to be patriotic and having to stay back in Nigeria uh, again, and build your system? My patriotism is to my nation, mm. and that means I support the nation any way I can. It does not necessarily mean I have to stay back here. I can't be in the diaspora and still support the nation in whatever capacity uh, you know, I'm capable of you know, influencing. Again, here's the thing. We've talked about, as I said earlier, the nation didn't move, uh, you know, along the treads of other nations when um, other nations were moving into tech and all of that. And this affected how, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the state of the nation in that sense. I mean, there was a, a, um, a government, you know, um, event which was well publicized sometime last year. In fact, it's what it had to do, you know, with the Minister of um, Digital Communications yes, in Sapatani. And surprisingly, you know, from the screen and all of that, we still saw Windows 7. I are wondering Windows mm -hmm. 7 at this age and time. You know, so when your government power startups are not even in sync with what's happening in terms of tech and what have you, how do you expect the best of our brains in these fields to stay? They will definitely go to climes where they can the get better jobs, better, better yes. pay, and they, have, they feel more relevant. So you really can't blame them when they leave. Again, it's not just about our pilots or engineers or doctors. You have several people, you know, moving for, um, you know, a, a better mm. um, life. And you can't blame people. Again, we hold these truths to be self-evident that, you know, every man, every individual has been endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life pursuit of happiness yeah that's part of it so if people decide to pursue happiness you know outside the shores of their nation you can't fault them okay um finally mm -hmm. do not forget that the deadline for voter registration remains june 30 yep. and that's coming from the INEC, and mm -hmm. that story is on page nine of the vanguard paper what we said all we can say for yep. now because we still have a lot of conversations on the show this morning but while you are campaigning for your preferred candidates on social media, it's good. I'd always say this is good to 
share your thoughts on social media is good to campaign for what you think is good for you, the country the nation of course for your conscience on social media but do not forget that elections are not won on social media they mm -hmm. can never be won on social media they are not counted on social media the best you can do for yourself and generations to come is to get your pvcs and vote when it's time and when you're voting vote with your conscience vote for the right candidate do not sell your vote it is your constitutional rights do not sell your vote and also try to be involved in politics from the grassroots very yep. very very important well we'll take a short break now when we come back we have another interesting segment where we will be discussing we have the main discussion for the day and the guests will be right here with us in the studio so please stay with us <laughs> 